Yashar Jasher 79. And in those days, Moshe was feeding the flock of Reuel, the Midyani, his father-in-law, beyond the wilderness of Sin. And the stick which he took from his father-in-law was in his hand. And it came to pass one day that a kid of goats strayed from the flock and Moshe pursued it. And it came to the mountain of Elohim, to Chorev. And when he came to Chorev, Yahuwah appeared there unto him in the thorn bush. And he found the thorn bush burning with fire, but the fire had no power over the thorn bush to consume it. And Moshe was greatly astonished at this sight, wherefore the thorn bush was not consumed. And he approached to see this mighty thing. And Yahuwah called unto Moshe out of the fire and commanded him to go down to Mitzrayim, to Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to send the children of Yashar'el from his service. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go, return to Mitzrayim, for all those men who sought your life are dead, and you shall speak unto Pharaoh, to send forth the children of Yashara'el from his land. And Yahuwah showed him to do signs and wonders in Mitzrayim before the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his subjects in order that they might believe that Yahuwah had sent him and Moshe hearkened to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. And he returned to his father-in-law and told him the thing. And Reuel said to him, Go in peace. And Moshe rose up to go to Mitzrayim. And he took his woman and sons with him. And he was at an inn in the road. And an angel of Elohim came down and sought an occasion against him. And he wished to kill him on account of his firstborn son, because he had not circumcised him and had transgressed the covenant which Yahuwah had made with Avraham, for Moshe had hearkened to the words of his father-in-law, which he had spoken to him, not to circumcise his firstborn son. Therefore, he circumcised him not. And Sipporah saw the angel of Yahuwah seeking an occasion against Moshe, and she knew that this thing was owing to his not having circumcised her son, Gersham. And Sipporah hastened and took of the sharp rock stones that were there, and she circumcised her son and delivered her man and her son from the hand of the angel of Yahuwah. And Dahran, the son of Amram, the brother of Moshe, was in Mitzrayim, walking at the riverside on that day. And Yahuwah appeared to him in that place. And he said to him, Go now toward Moshe in the wilderness, 
And he went and met him in the mountain of Elohim. And he kissed him. And Aharan lifted up his eyes and saw Sipporah, the woman of Moshe, and her children. And he said unto Moshe, Who are these unto you? And Moshe said unto him, They are my woman and sons, which Elohim gave to me in Midian. And the thing grieved Aharan on account of the woman and her children. And Aharan said to Moshe, Send away the woman and her children, that they may go to her father's house. And Moshe hearkened to the words of Aharan, and did so. And Sipporah returned with her children, and they went to the house of Reuel, and remained there until the time arrived when Yahuwah had visited his people and brought them forth from Mitzrayim, from the hand of Pharaoh. And Moshe and Ahran came to Mitzrayim, to the community of the children of Yashar'el, and they spoke to them all the words of Yahuwah, and the people rejoiced, an exceeding great rejoicing. And Moshe and Aharon rose up early on the next day, and they went to the house of Pharaoh, and they took in their hands the stick of Elohim. And when they came to the king's gate, Two young lions were confined there with iron instruments. And no person went out or came in from before them unless those whom the king ordered to come. When the conjurers came and withdrew the lions by their incantations and thus brought them to the king. And Moshe hastened and lifted up the stick upon the lions and he loosed them and Moshe and Aharon came into the king's house. The lions also came with them in joy and they followed them and rejoiced as a dog rejoices over his master when he comes from the field. And when Pharaoh saw this thing, he was astonished at it, and he was greatly terrified at the report, for their appearance was like the appearance of the children of Elohim. And Pharaoh said to Moshe, What do you require? And they answered him, saying, Yahuwah, Elohim of the Ivrim, has sent us to you to say, Send forth my people, that they may serve me. And when Pharaoh heard the words, he was greatly terrified before them. And he said to them, Go today and come back to me tomorrow. And they did according to the word of the king. And when they had gone, Pharaoh sent for Balaam, the magician, and to Janes and Jamres, his sons, and to all the magicians and conjurers and counselors which belonged to the king. And they all came and sat before the king. And the king told them all the words which Moshe and his brother Aharon had spoken to him. And the magicians said to the king, But how came the men to you? on account of the lions which were confined at the gate. And the king said, Because they lifted up their rod against the lions and loosed them and came to me. And the lions also rejoiced at them as a dog rejoices to meet his master. And Balaam, the son of Beor, the magician, answered the king, saying, These are none else than magicians like ourselves. 
Now, therefore, send for them and let them come, and we will try them. And the king did so. And in the morning, Pharaoh sent for Moshe and Aharon to come before the king. And they took the rod of Elohim and came to the king and spoke to him, saying, Thus says Yahuwah Elohim of the Ivrim, Send my people that they may serve me. And the king said to them, But who will believe you that you are the messengers of Elohim and that you come to me by his order? Now therefore, give a wonder or a sign in this matter, and then the words which you speak will be believed. And Aharon hastened and threw the rod out of his hand before Pharaoh and before his servants. And the rod turned into a serpent. And the sorcerers saw this, and they cast each man his rod upon the ground, and they became serpents. And the serpent of Aharon's rod lifted up its head and opened its mouth to swallow the rods of the magicians. And Balaam the magician answered and said, This thing has been from the days of old, that a serpent should swallow its fellow, and that living things devour each other. Now therefore restore it to a rod as it was at first, and we will also restore our rods as they were at first. And if your rod shall swallow our rods, then shall we know that the Ruach Elohim is in you. And if not, you are only an artificer like unto ourselves. And Aharon hastened and stretched forth his hand and caught hold of the serpent's tail, and it became a rod in his hand. And the sorcerers did the like with their rods, and they got hold, each man, of the tail of his serpent, and they became rods as at first. And when they were restored to rods, the rod of Aharon swallowed up their rods. And when the king saw this thing, he ordered the sefer of records that related to the kings of Mitzrayim to be brought. And they brought the sefer of records, the chronicles of the kings of Mitzrayim, in which all the idols of Mitzrayim were inscribed, for they thought of finding therein the name of Yahuwah, but they found it not. And Pharaoh said to Moshe and Aharon, Behold, I have not found the name of your Elohim written in this sefer, and his name I know not. And the counselors and wise men answered the king, We have heard that Elohim of the Avrim is a son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. And Pharaoh turned to Moshe and Aharon said, and said to them, I know not, Yahuwah whom you have declared, neither will I send his people. And they answered and said to the king, Yahuwah, Elohim of Elohim, is his name. And he proclaimed his name over us from the days of our ancestors and sent us, saying, Go to Pharaoh and say unto him, Send my people that they may serve me. Now therefore send us, that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness, and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Mitzrayim, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offering, oblation, or sacrifice. And if you will not send us, his anger will be kindled against you. And he will smite Mitzrayim, either with the plague or with the sword. 
And Pharaoh said to them, Tell me now his power and his might. And they said to him, He created the heavens and the earth, the seas and all their fish. He formed the light, created the darkness, caused rain upon the earth, and watered it, and made the herbage and grass to sprout. He created man and beast, and the animals of the forest, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. And by his mouth they live and die. Surely he created you in your mother's womb, and put into you the breath of life, and reared you and placed you upon the royal throne of Mitzrayim, and he will take your breath and soul from you and return you to the ground whence you were taken. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words, and he said to them, But who amongst all the Elohim of nations can do this? My river is my own, and I have made it for myself. And he drove them from him, and he ordered the labor upon Yasharael to be more severe than it was yesterday and before. And Moshe and Nahran went out from the king's presence, and they saw the children of Yashadael in an evil condition, for the taskmasters had made their labor exceedingly heavy. And Moshe returned to Yahuwah and said, Why have you ill-treated your people? For since I came to speak to Pharaoh, what you did send me for, he has exceedingly ill-used the children of Yashadael. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Behold, you will see that with an outstretched hand and heavy plagues, Pharaoh will send the children of Yashadael from his land. And Moshe and Ahran dwelt amongst their brethren, the children of Yashadael, in Mitzrayim. And as for the children of Yashadael, the Mitzrayim embittered their lives with the heavy work which they imposed upon them.